Okay, today we continue with our Kisa Shochanor class. This class number 45. And we start with the uh, we start with Sefer Shmiras Lashon <clears throat> and topic today affliction of the soul. Okay. The fact that Saras is spiritual malady, which afflicts the soul, aside from afflicting the body, is stated in the Madrish. So as we said, of course, it's a suffering of the body, <clears throat> all of these uh, uh, spots and stuff like that. And uh, of course, there is a, uh, so a spiritual and physical suffering. Okay. One who guards uh, his, uh, as it says in marriage, one who guards his mouth and tongue guards his soul from tribulation. It's from Mishnah, 21, 23. Okay. Um, so his soul from tribulation can be read homiletically. One who guards his mouth and tongue guards his soul from tsaras. Okay, so if you watch your tongue, so you will guard your soul from tsaras. Okay. Thus, one who, uh, one who is uh, in a habit of speaking Russian Hara should bemoan the state of his soul. Uh, though Hashem has mercy on him and does not uh, reveal his disgrace, in, in this world, such uh, uh, such will not be the case in the world to come. There are shame and malady. Uh, I'm sorry. There, there, the shame and uh, and the shame of his malady will be revealed to all. Alone will he sit above, outside the camp of Israel, unless he repents properly before departing this world. So as we know, so. Um, when somebody has a tsaras, has to uh, sit uh, beyond the, the, the walls of, uh, of of the city. So they say same here in this world, beyond the walls of the city. So same in the world to come, uh, beyond the walls of the city. It's very interesting. Uh, we learned today that um, <clears throat> that that's that's the reason it was necessary to know which which city were surrounded uh, by the wall in the time of Yehoshua ben Nun. And why? I think uh, is there, my correct that there were three reasons why we, we need to know when to read Megillah. We need to know uh, if uh, this person with Saras has to go the outside of the city walls. And the third one was uh, that you can uh, buy your house back. So if you sold your house, you have one year to buy it back from uh, the person that you sold to. Okay. <clears throat> so. Very nice, so we continue, a second. So we continue with uh, Kitzer. So we're, um, we're on Simon 15 and Halacha number 11. So quickly, uh, we do a review of uh, what we did last time. It was uh, last Halacha was very interesting and very intense. So our topic is love of Kaddish and Borg. And we said that, uh, I'll just give a quick summary. So a person should not leave uh, the synagogue or the place where they pray, if uh, he's going to break the minion, right? So if there are more, more than 10 people, so there's no problem that he can leave. Uh, but if even if somebody left and they are in the middle of the prayer, right? Uh, and then uh, we said that they are allowed to finish uh, the, the, the praying. And for example, if they start Ashmona uh, Esle <clears throat> on Shacharis or or Mincha, together with the Minion, then some one guy left, so nine people. So they allowed, they allowed to, uh, to, to do a repetition of Shmona Esra, even though there is no, no 10 people. And they allowed uh, to say Kiddusha, and they allowed to say this uh, 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 priestly blessing, not uh, the whatever husband says. Um, and what else? And um, and we say if it's a mincha time, mincha time, so they allowed even to say Kaddish, that is after Shmona Esra, because in this Kaddish, there is a Tiskabel, there is a, when you ask Hashem to, um, to accept the, the prayer. So basically, I would say, just say, this Kaddish is connected to, uh, this Kaddish is connected uh, to, the, to the prayer itself. Okay, so to, to the Shmoneser, I'm sorry. They, okay, they started Shmoneser with a minion, so they, uh, they can say the Kaddish. And uh, 
the same we said uh, if they started the reading of the Torah with the minion, then one guy left wherever he went. So we can uh, continue and finish reading of the Torah. <clears throat> the, the only thing we said, we cannot add aliyah. So in, in case of the need on Shabbos and Yom Tov, we need to add extra aliyah above the required number. Um, so they cannot do that if, if they don't have enough people. Okay, so that's where, where we left off. So continue. <clears throat> We're doing the Sif number 11. It says, Hazan must be worthy of his position. As the verse states in Yirmiyahu 12, 8, the Jewish people gave uh, her voice to me. Therefore, I, ha I, have, uh, I have hated her. Also, it's of the blessed man. So it's very like, uh, not, not sure what this verse means, right? Uh, the sages of the blessed memory stand, Tanis uh, 16, A and B. This verse refers to unworthy Hazan, who is nevertheless uh, descended from uh, before the ark and pray for the congregation. So let's read it again and try to explain. The Hazan must be worthy of position, as the verse said in Yirmiyahu 12.8. She, the Jewish people, gave her voice to me. So meaning that the Jewish people cried to Hashem. Right? Uh, therefore, I have hated her. So they cry, and Hashem hated her. I mean, in the Jewish people. Also, is a blessed memory said. This is the verse of first unworthy chasm, who nevertheless descend before the ark to pray in the, for the congregation. So that's a big problem in many shows today when uh, they just send somebody who is willing to go. You know, so some, you know, like. People are lazy, they don't want to go, so they send anybody, even the, the Rasha guy. <clears throat> so, come to him. But, Such uh, a, I, I want to ask, but let's say like everybody there uh, is okay. And for example, uh, in the call that I uh, that I study at sometimes, uh, over there, they let like the Yeshiva Bakram be like Hazen if they want to be, right? So it's okay to like keep switching as long as it's a normal Absolutely, person. yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're, there is no problem. So if, if there is no uh, person assigned to a job, for example, uh -huh. uh, there, there, there is a job to be community housing that they pay with money. So if there, there is no, no such a person, they, they, they continue, uh, they, they, they can switch. Uh, the, the only thing it's, as we, we, we said, that we're going to continue. I'm not sure how deep he's going to go, uh, probably not, not too deep, but, but we, we try to, to explain. So basically it should be worth it person. This guy represents you and I and everybody in the minyan. Understand? So it has to, it's like, it's, it's, if he's not worthy, so it's very possible that our malit, uh, our prayer is going to, to stuck here on the earth, which is not good. Right? So we need to, to send a worthy individual, but the, in, in the case that you gave, the, the bokor that studied Torah from, from the morning to night, what could be better? You understand? So what could be better? He's younger, does not make any, any, any difference. If he's a uh, righteous individual, absolutely. But is it, be better. Yeah. Is, it, is it better to have a set hazen or does it not really matter? If you have that many people, you know, who can switch back and forth. Some, sometimes, uh, like uh, some, re uh, <laughs> some richer community, they want somebody to sing nice and stuff like that. So they would uh, hire a person to pay him, I don't know. Seventy thousand dollars to pray for them. You understand? <laughs> so okay, so they, they can afford, but other people they simply it's not about uh, they don't want somebody with a good voice uh, that they cannot afford. Mm -hmm. So and they they switch and plus in a, in a bigger in a bigger shoes, it's not practical. And I'm going to explain why. Uh, there is a custom, especially for, through uh, among the Ashkenazim Jew. Just so if you are, if, if somebody like a parents, uh, as well, parents or children or somebody close uh, to that person passed, uh, passed away, so there is custom that, that that person would pray as a chazan on all of the weekdays, except holidays and Shabbos. So uh, they call him he, so he's obligated. It's, he's not really obligated, but they call him that he's obligated for whatever reason. So basically, like if you have, uh, I don't know, like, uh, 50, 60 people in the show. So for sure somebody would have uh, like, uh, would, would have to pray. Like uh, he, he would lose his mother 
father, well, like brother. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So it's it's not practical to have cousin from time to time. Uh -huh. But if, if they have a rule, so only this guy is praying, no, no matter what, okay, you're, you don't like our rules, you can to you want to be your cousin, go to another place. So if they have a rule like that, so that's very simple. But if not, so it's not that simple to to tell somebody not to pray. Understand? Unless the guy is Russia, so it's not that so simple to stop. Mm -hmm. Understand. Got it? Continue. Yes. So, so let, let's see. Okay, so come to such a cousin is alluded by um, uh, alluded to by this verse, since he gives nothing to Hashem but his voice. So voice is sweet, but he is a Russian. There is he has not of the truly important qualities of the husband. So husband has to be like a very special person, right? Who especially, especially Rosh Hashanah is coming, Yom Kippur is coming. So this uh, on the day of judgment, you don't want to hire this lawyer. There is a, the judge there. That everybody knows the whole city knows that he's a crook himself. You understand that it's it's only a matter of time they're going to uh, uh, catch him with a, with a big case. Everybody knows that. Right? So it's not proper for you to hire a lawyer like that, right? So for you to probably to to hire a decent lawyer that everybody respects, that everybody knows that he's an honest person, he knows what uh, he's trustworthy, you know. So that's about Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. No, okay. So continue. Who is a worthy husband? One who is free of sins. So I would say, as as you uh, from uh, from Rizal, the, you you give. So I, I guess the younger person is uh, is uh, has less sins than others. I guess, right? I mean, uh, especially Shiva Boch. I we hope so. Right? Those um, I'm saying. So one one more time. One who is free of sins, whose youth was proper. That's a hard one, right? Uh, meaning that even in the youth years, he did not have bad reputation. That's a strong statement. So even in the youth, that he had, uh, he was straight, even in the youth, right? No, they did not have bad reputation. Uh, one who is humble, very important, one who is humble, and, uh, and who is acceptable, so that's all of his characteristics, who is acceptable by the congregation, uh, who approve, um, who approve of his praying for them. So basically he represents me. I, I, I do care who's going to represent me, all right? Which is understandable. Who can chant the prayer with a sweet melody and his voice is pleasant and drones at the heart. So that's, uh, that's very important. So he can sing nicely. And uh, so, I mean, if, if, if he borrowed money from somebody, let's say, and I'm just like making them again, an example, this uh, guy hates him, so he does not want this uh, and he doesn't want to pay back. So this guy and maybe his brother and his uh, brother-in-law, does the, the, they do not want him to, to be like uh, their representative, right? Continue, and who is accustomed to reading from uh, five books of Torah, Humash, Prophets and Writings? Uh, this three section of Tanakh, okay. So that he should be fluent in the verses mentioned in a prayer. So meaning uh, maybe not not uh, not even uh, maybe not, not in Humash, but uh, maybe the, if if he if he knows the the prayers. But th since um, most of the prayers uh, kind of, um, come from from the sources, so he should be fluent in, uh, in reading. So, okay. So that he should not, should be fluent in the verses mentioned in prayers. Okay. If the congregation cannot find one who has all these uh, qualities, they should choose the best of the uh, available candidates <laughs> in the area of Torah wisdom and good deeds. So basically you want somebody proper to represent you. I think it's uh, very clear and simple. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> continue, next CF number 12. One should not lead the prayer before the ark, that is to serve as a chasm, against the wishes of the congregation. So I mean, like forcing himself. And uh, with this uh, thing, when uh, when uh, I saw, I saw, I was witnessing, like, I don't know, several times. I don't know how many times, but uh, several times. I'm trying not, not to remember all of these disgusting things. 
but people were arguing like uh, this one uh, was uh, had uh, lost his mother. This uh, one had his uh, lost his father, and now they want to be uh, Hazanim. Like uh, this one go uh, wants to go uh, like pray in front of that one, and they argued. It it was loud. It was so discussed. So I, I, if you ask me, just both of you go out. Like I don't want to be in the same minion with you. Is it possible uh, for for someone to switch chazan with someone in the middle? In the middle? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, uh, let's say Shema, then he does Shema in Ezra. Usually, in, the, uh, in, in this case, you see Shema and Shema and Ezra, they, they, like, attach together. So let's say uh, this, let's say they make a deal. This one does Shema, Shema and Ezra uh, on, on Shabbos, and then that one does everything else. Uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. You're, you're right. So, so I mean, there, there are several blocks. So you can you can do several blocks. So, for example, you, you can have one one person to say morning brachas, and he say he can say uh, also this uh, what is it, um, carbonus, right? So one one person, and then the second person can say a uh, uh, second person can say what is it, uh, psuki de zimra. And the third person can say uh, uh, Shema and Shmona Esre. So why were they arguing? They start reading of the Torah. Okay, go ahead. So why, so why were they arguing if they could just do that? I, it, was, uh, it was in the morning. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why they were arguing. I mean, they, they could split, but uh, <laughs> uh, the best part. Okay, so I have to tell you why. So the, the best part is to do Shema and Shemon and Esra because he does the, the repetition and, and, and he calls Borhu and uh, everybody answers and stuff like that. It's more like a respectable part. Uh -huh. okay. It's a cho choicest part. Mm -hmm. So they were arguing it in uh, other, other words, they're arguing because of the Marif. Marif is, uh, I mean, uh, that, that's only one person. You, you cannot speak Marif. So, someone who's, uh, what's it called? Uh... Uh, you know, a mourner, right? So yeah. he, he has a, we'll say like uh, they said, he has a key of to uh, be chazan on weekdays, right? Yeah. So is it... Uh, right. it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's not it's not a halacha. Yeah, yeah. But if he wants to be, it's good. It's going to be good for a memory of a deceased and, uh, and, and so on. But, but for example, I give you one, one example. So not everybody is fit. For example, if he down slowly, and now this minion is flying, so it's not proper for him to be husband because he's going to down with his own speed, or he's going to be under the pressure of, of their speed. You understand? And he's not, not going to have any concentration. What 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 what, what was the, the purpose of all? Uh-huh. Understood. But it's so obviously you have to judge uh, on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. What is it? So let's say, uh, what's it called? Uh, let's say, you know, it's customary. Is it customary for him to do one of the services uh, uh, during the day or all three? If if there is nobody else, yeah, it's properly for him to do all of the three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, for, for example, in the show, where, where I am going now, so in, uh, in two... Two people ju just finished mm -hmm. us the, like uh, same college, mm -hmm. two of them. So they, they were switching. Uh, he, they say, I have a name, I do or other, other, way, other way around. So it was fine. Or they, they would split Shafris in two. So mm -hmm. also fine. Okay, but uh, it's normal people. But but some some people, like, uh, they, they take it over the top. And uh, because of the, 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 the deceased mother, he's uh, ready to insult everybody. Mm -hmm. Even if that uh, that person is not as worthy as he, but uh, I mean, that's uh, that's not uh, that's not the reason to insult anybody. Anyway. Okay, so let's uh, read the next halacha. <clears throat> so if congregation does not want it, just uh, just uh, it's not good for him to be chazan. Moreover, whoever does not uh, does lead the prayer without their permission, like for forces himself by virtue of his power. Uh, or intimidation. So he's a big uh, this president, as we, as I said, the jokes about this president, right? This mamza, right? Uh, this power of intimidation and arrogance. Intimidation and arrogance. We do not respond with the main with his blessings. 
as it says in Tehillim, uh, 10 3, a thief who received, uh, um, recite the blessing has blasphemed, uh, blasphemed Hashem. Right? See below. Okay, so let's see commentary and we're going to explain. We do not respond with a man to his uh, to, to this husband, who is not considered to be reciting blessing at all, but uh, but to be blaspheming. Mishnah Bruna. So basically it's a it's very strong statement. So if somebody steals, right? So so the, this guy is told uh, an apple. So and uh, he says blessing. As normal Jew would do on the apple, so it's basically it's a uh, Hashem says for me it's an abomination. You steal, and and you bless me. It's better for you not not to bless me. You understand? So so same same this husband, he he forced himself on the community, and now he says blessing. So it's not a blessing; it's abomination. So coming to him regarding the impropriety of fighting. For the right to perform mitz any mitzvah, so they say C twenty nine nine. Okay, we're going to get to it. So I mean, uh, it defeats the the whole pur purpose. Uh, they, they, in in, in Shemaim, they are going to take this poor deceased mother and said, look, look, look who you left there. You, you this uh, imbecile. Look, 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 look what he's doing. He's breaking up the community. This guy, right? Not proper. So continue, CF number 13. So it's like actually the last CF in this CMA. It says a husband should not be appointed to a permanent position, should not, unless he, uh, he, um, his uh, beard is full. Okay, meaning that he has beard. Okay, what does it mean, Kamitin? He does not actually have to have a beard, uh, but must have been of age that his beard would be full if he had one. Okay, 53. So meaning that he's an, in an in age like, uh, uh, I would say like, um, sometimes some, somebody is, uh, is a bar mitzvah. Okay, you can ask him to pray one time, but uh, not, uh, not on a permanent basis, basically. <clears throat> okay, continue. However, on, a case, uh, on occasional basis, on okay, exactly. Whoever is 13 years old uh, in a day, can descend before the ark and lead the prayers. Wait, Rabbi. Okay. But yeah. let's say uh, the, the other guy uh, doesn't daven as well as the kid, and the kid, you know, he can do everything. He can sing like the guy who does it for $70,000, right? We should still have that. We should still uh, not have the kid uh, usually, and we should have the guy instead. Uh, say Say it again about, about that kid. I'm, I'm saying, let's say the kid does everything better than like the yes. other guy who could be a chazan. Still, if that guy can have a full beard, we choose him. Uh, I I think if, if if the kid is more more righteous, for example, he he's learned and that guy is ignoramus. He's balabais who can just read very fast. Mm -hmm. So we, we choose the kid. There is no question about it. So we, we, could, we, we go by by righteousness. The, the the possibility to grow a beard it's a beard it's like a, it's not the best uh, the best thing but but they, they uh, I think the Shulchan Aruch means that if you can if you have a choice between people so that's uh, that's you what, what you you're supposed to mm -hmm. who who you're supposed to choose like with these people these elderly people not elderly well they, they sit around and they uh, get you 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 the, the young you know the, the youngster you go. And this guy, he's uh, I don't know, 13, 14 years old. He's very happy. He's jumping around. I mean, he's going to lead the community. Of course, he's uh, he's eager to do it, but it's not proper for this. Uh, maybe it is proper. It's better for them uh, if they uh, see this mitzvah, this uh, treat, treat this mitzvah, mitzvah as such a contempt. It's better for them not to care. And so it's better to this kid who is eager, who is running to do the mitzvah, let him pray. Okay, continue. Uh, whoever is uh, 13 old, um, 13 year old in one day can descend before the ark and lead the prayers. So I would say on uh, on occasions, okay? But uh, as, as we said, depends on the situation. If you have a choice, it's one thing. If you don't have a choice, that's another thing. The rest of the laws concerning uh, the can be found in Shulchanot, uh, in Shulchanot. Is, is the Hazan the same one who reads the Torah or no? No, no, no. That's one is Balkhore. 
I, it it could it could be the same person, but uh, not necessarily. You, usually, the, those are like separate people. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Are the halachas so, the same regarding them or no? Like yeah, a, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. It's, okay. He's should be a proper person. Okay. And again, the special requirements of the husband appointed to lead the, the prayer of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Sikubo one twenty eight. So, of course, on Rosh Hashanah, as we said, uh, it's uh, that judgment day. You want somebody very, very proper to 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 lead the to to represent you. So it's very interesting. Rabbi Rubin said this story. So, some years ago, so he he was going to a shul, and I'm not and I don't remember how the story started. So basically, he found out, I'm not sure how, that uh, the the guy was reading the Torah. He's a coin. There's no problem for a coin to read the Torah, but uh, the thing is that he was married to somebody who uh, he could not marry. I don't remember. Was it uh, maybe? A, divorcee or was it uh, I don't know some some woman that he he was not able to, to marry or was not allowed to marry so basically a person like this cannot read the Torah from the Torah I mean because he goes against Hashem every second of his life and now he is going to read this holy Torah it's like uh, not proper you understand so but uh, <clears throat> unfortunately everybody knew <clears throat> including this uh, rabbi and they, everybody kept quiet is is the what's it called when a Cohen uh gets married to like let's say divorcee someone who we can't marry correct yeah, yeah. so uh question is it like uh he has to give a get or is there no like ketubah in the first place is there a chance that they might have a ketubah by accident and the ketubah stands no no no, no. so it's it's a zero i mean uh, the, the, the if 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 I remember correctly, so this uh, this uh, the, this is not a marriage. There there is no the ma marriage to, to begin with. Mm -hmm. So they can do. I mean, uh, he he can go and marry a cat or a dog. That's uh, but it, it's uh, there is no marriage. Uh -huh. Same when Jew marries not Jew, there is no marriage. Uh -huh. okay. So uh, that it is uh, this coin or he for example he. He married somebody uh, who, like um, a lady, so she was with, with a non Jew, for example, right? So she cannot marry a coin. Or some other, like uh, there are like five or six different types of women that women married, uh, okay, cannot marry a coin. Or convert, convert cannot marry a coin. Uh -huh. For whatever reason, right? But, so so who, who exactly isn't allowed to be, uh, what's it called? Uh, so for example, can we count that Cohen in Kaddish at least or no in a minyan? Mm, I'm not sure, I don't want to answer because I'm not 100% positive, mm -hmm. but it's it's very, very questionable. I'm not sure what, what that everybody would agree that you can count it uh -huh. because uh, it's 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 one of these people, it's one of the I have to. Okay. So it's one of the people that goes against Hashem on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's not like uh, so you you cannot compare him to somebody like for example that uh, would eat non kosher from time to time. Well, but like from time to time, right? Once a month, right? so he could not hold himself back, and he went and. Did that. But this guy, he lives with her like every day. That's a big problem. Well, what are right? the what, what's the like for, for his kids? What's the whole lafik status? Are they moms or him? What are they? No, 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 they're not, they're not my moms or him, but they halalim. Uh huh. What's the difference? Halalim, hal, halal is uh, meaning uh, that uh, that father can, uh, can I think, um, until she he, he divorces this woman, he cannot do priestly blessings. Uh -huh. But after he divorces or whatever, he fixes the issue, it's possible to fix the issue with the show. So he can go back and do priestly blessings, right? But uh, children, they're not considered to be Kohanim. Uh -huh. that's, uh, that's a big problem. And, uh, and uh, well, women are halala, so also the, the, the problem, they cannot, oh, that, that's another type. I'm sorry. So that's another type who cannot marry coin. Mm -hmm. You understand so understood so to be coin is a big responsibility <clears throat> okay so um, continue so cf number 16 
So the topic, new, new topic lost concerning interruption during the blessing of Kriya Shema and or Kriya Shema itself. Okay, as uh, actually, I think uh, one of you, I don't remember who asked this question. So I said, we're going to discuss in details. So here are details. Containing five CFM. Okay, CF number one. The Shema and the three accompanying blessings, which are the blessing beginning Yoytzer Or, who forms the light, and the blessing Ahava Rabba, with abundant love, both of which recited before Shema, and the blessing beginning a mess by Yitzif, it is true and certain, which is uh, recited after Shema. And likewise, uh, with, uh, with regard to the recitation of the Shema and its accompanying blessing, blessings, is uh, in the evening prayers as well. A most rigid Psuki de Zimra with regard to allowing the responses to other blessings and uh, in interrupts during the recitation. Okay, so it was, believe it or not, it was all one sentence. So now we're going to go from the beginning with, um, with commentary and the sense. So, so just to remind ourselves, so we're in a, in a topic of uh, morning prayers. Okay, so one more time. The Shema and three accompanying blessings. So basically when, when Shema uh, starts, after we say Borhu, right? That's, uh, that's when uh, uh, we, we answer Hazen and that's, uh, that's when the Shema starts with all of the blessings. Right, so one more time, the Shema and three accompanying blessings. So, how many blessings? Three, which are the blessing Yorzer or so it's a um, who forms lights that that's uh, like in a, in, a, in a very very beginning, it's like second line or whatever line is it in our Sidorim, like after Borhu. The blessing Ahavaraba, so it's like uh, meaning Yorzer or if, if you think about it, it's like pretty long blessing, then Ahavaraba. Is abundant love. Um, that's the second blessing. All right, and they say, or new Nusach Sfar, Ahavas Oilam, is in uh, eternal love. So uh, this or this, so it doesn't matter. Nusach Sfar, Nusach Ashkenaz, both of which are recited before Shema. Okay, so they, this blessing, bef these two blessings before Shema, then you say Shema itself. Right, and the blessing beginning with MS way itself is sure and certain, which is recited after Shema. So, this is number three. So, commentary although MS is actually in the first word of the blessing after Shema, it is recited together uh, with the end of the Shema. Okay, so, so this MS is like when uh, when uh, Hazan is trying to, to wait for everybody. If it's possible, and then they uh, they continue with the congregation again. Okay, which is uh, recited after Shema, and likewise with regard to recitation of the Shema and accompanying blessing in the evening prayers as well. So in evening prayers, so coming to the same evening prayer, they accompanied by four blessings. So in the morning we have three, two before Shema and one after. In the evening we have uh, three blessings, uh, four blessings. Sorry, in the evening. Uh, Shema ac um, accompanied by four blessings. Um, first one is Asher Bidvaro Marif Aruvim, meaning um, uh, who by his word uh, begins the evening or brings the evening. And Avas uh, Oilam, right? So uh, that's uh, so it's second blessing. That's what uh, Sephardim say. Uh, in the morning also, our soil, but uh, Ashkenazim say this only at night. Okay, with eternal love. Both preceded the Shema, right? MS Veimuna, uh, the true and faithful, and Hashbi uh, Heinu, Hashbi Veinu, I'm sorry, Hashki Veinu. Hashkiveinu uh, lay us down following the Shema. So, so one, one more time. So before, so if you want to look up in your Siddur, so before Shema, we're, we're talking about Marif now. So before Shema, you have two blessings. One more time. 
uh, in English, uh, who by his uh, words brings the evening. And second, with eternal love. So I mean, the first blessing pretty long, then with eternal love is the second blessing. <laughs> it's before Shema, and Ms. Veimuna is a uh, is, uh, third one. And Hashkiveinu is the fourth blessing after Shema. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so now now we so we know about we know about three paragraphs of Shema. So now we say there is uh, let's say we're talking about the morning three paragraphs of uh, blessings. So let's see where where exactly you can interrupt. Right. So the law of interruption are more stringent than Psuki de Zimna. With uh, with regard to, to allowing responses to other blessing and the interruption during the recitation. So they see about. So basically about so Psuki de Zimra, we said. If you need to answer amen to somebody's bracha, so you can answer amen, there is no problem. Of course, it's proper to say it between the paragraphs, or at least you finish idea, like in, uh, for example, you, you read the uh, paragraph, so you just finish idea or just finish sentence, or if, if you must interrupt, like in the middle of sentence, okay, interrupt in the middle of the sentence, but uh, maybe finish the idea, stuff like that, but here is more stringent. So and there you can you can say um Rabba, okay, other things you can answer to Kedusha uh during um, at least the first two calls for Kedusha during um, the Psukidizim. Um, so here it's more stringent. For the purposes of this halachas, the Shema and the blessing are divided into prakim sections. Okay, so sections, I mean uh, if you have uh, this in Sidur, if you have uh, art scroll Sidur, it's, uh, I think it's uh, one of the best Sidurim ever. So they, they have clearly divided, you see where, where the paragraph ends, where the paragraph begins. So they uh, indicate it very nicely. So it says the Halach has governed these inter interruptions, are permitted, um, permitted hinges upon whether one is in the middle of the section or between the sections. Bein uh, Haperakim as explained in the following section. So we're going to get to it. So we're going to say that between sections, uh, it's allowed. We're going, we're going to see between which sections are allowed. And in the middle of the paragraph, it, it is not allowed. So we're going to see also all of the details. The following places are referred to Ben Haperakim. Okay. What's, what's, uh, what do you do if you make an interruption in the middle of a paragraph? Well, what is now? We interruption. Um, we mean not to answer a main, for example. Uh -huh. uh, you're that not allowed, right? No, in the, in the middle, no. Ah, uh, yeah. So exactly. So let's say you say a main. You keep going, or you go back to the. You, no, you just if 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 you if you know that that he's going to say a main in three seconds, two seconds. So you just keep quiet. You stop. Try uh -huh. try to do it till the end of the sentence. Uh -huh. Stop. Listen and uh, listening is like answering. Uh -huh. Well, let's say you did say it. Do you go back to the start or? No, no, no. You you continue. You don't you don't go to the start. No, no. In this case, uh, um, you continue only with uh, if I remember correctly, only in the Shmona Esa when we did the mistakes, and we're going to see which mistakes uh, counted like severe mistakes. You have to go back. Okay. Especially it's coming up, so you get you got it, guys. You got to be very careful. Um, uh, during Rosh Hashanah, uh, between uh, Rosh Hashanah in, and, and Yom Kippur. So in many cases, when you forgot, in some cases, when you forgot to, to say that, to change the wording, so I have to go back. And, and we're going to, I, I think we have time to, to get to that point, to, 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 to that halakha before, before the, the time. <clears throat> okay, so basically, so one, one more time. For the purposes of this halachas, so I mean in, in, in interruption, right? The Shema uh, and its blessing being divided in, uh, into Perakim sections. Okay. The following places are referred to Bain Haperakim. Bain, it's like um, between, right? So it's like between the sections. Between the words of Yotzer, uh, Yotzer Hamaros, who fashioned the luminaries. Uh, which, uh, which are the last words of the first blessing. And Ahavarapa, 
the words of the second blessing. All right, so you you cannot uh, do this. Right, you you cannot speak between Chaboker um, Beam Israel Beahava, who chooses uh, his uh, his people of Israel with love. The last word of the second blessing, and Shema Israel, right, hero of Israel, and the first words of the Shema itself. Between uh, uh, the word and, and upon your gates, and the last words of the first section of the Shema. And Vechaya uh, im Shamoan. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain all of this about this. So let, let me just finish the sentence. I mean, it's all, it's all sentence and we explain. And he will come to pass, and it will come to pass that you are hearkening. And the first words of the second section of the Shema, between al Eretz on the earth, the last words of the second section, and um, Vayomer, and he said, the first words of the final section of the Shema. So basically, uh, if, if you have like astral cedar, I would say how they know where you can uh, answer a man when it says the congregation answer a man. Means that you're allowed to answer me. So if you have cedar, uh, should I, should I get my cedar, or you can check yourself? Do you good? So all, all the sections, whatever you can answer, but it says that you you answer a man. That's where where you as an individual can answer a man. Not not only on uh, whatever husband is saying, but let's say let's say uh, they a little ahead of you, or I don't know you. Yeah, they ahead of you, you're behind for whatever reason. So they they doing something else completely. So in this uh, in this uh, breaks, so you can answer a main to, to to different brothers. So for example, so they to all, say, at, yeah. At, at those points, I can answer a main to all any bracha. Yeah. Okay. I think so. There, yeah. and plus plus to Kaddish. So okay. So somebody saying Kaddish, you're behind. It's okay, you can answer on me. Is is it over? Uh, is it ever okay? Does it count as an okay interruption? For example, uh, when when they're bringing out the Torah, uh, Torah right? Uh, you say like a Tehillim or something, or when they're uh, when they're putting it back in, right? Is that a time where it's okay to make an interruption, or you should make an interruption, or no? I mean, no, let's. Where, uh, so, where, where are you at, at that point? So, they, they're taking out the Torah. So, what, what, what are you doing at this point? I don't know. Let's say I'm still at Shema. Let's say I'm in the middle of the. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you don't break for that. No, no, no. no. Not at all. Just... No. So, so for, for example, if uh, when, when the Torah is traveling, I mean, it's, uh, they take out of the, of the Aran Kodesh and they're walking, you must stand up. Mm -hmm. You understand? Well, well, it is traveling. You, know, you have to stay until it's uh, rest. Mm -hmm. So, but but then, uh, so I mean, maybe, maybe it's proper that that you stand. Maybe you you like could be be quiet for this I don't know, fifteen seconds, or if you can uh, if you can continue reading, you can continue reading. Whatever you do, but uh, yeah, otherwise you're 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 in break for that. Yeah. Is a person allowed to dive in or while they're reading from the sacred Torah or no? It's um. So ba basically, if, if you're behind, so you, you have to listen to, to the reading of the Torah. Well, well let's put it, I'm, I'm going to buy a little more linear opinion, let's say. So, and, uh, but on, on, on one hand, you have to finish davening. On the other hand, you have to listen to the Torah. So you can re uh, listen to one aliyah, at least. All right, so maybe in, uh, you will listen to a coin, you stop wherever you are, listen to a coin, and then they continue davening, let's say. Mm -hmm. Or you you went to for example you you finish and whatever you finish and so you 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 skip the you you skip the reading of the coin and lady and then you listen to Israel. Mm -hmm. Understood. Oh, and also I'm going to ask you because we already went through this part in the kitzer. It's just a little different of a question. So we read about Psuke de Zimmer before, correct? Yeah. So let's say on on Shabbos, right? We have much more Psuke de Zimra. Yeah, I know that on a normal weekday, if you didn't say the psuke de zimra, you have to go back. But for those additional psuke de zimra, do you also have to go back on? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, whatever we skip, 
whatever you were allowed to skip, uh, you just go there. Uh -huh. But uh, but the presidents, when, when 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 you need to skip because you've been late, so whatever I said on a daily basis takes for sure takes more presidents than uh, than it says on Shabbos, except the last uh, the last piece. And Nishmas Yeah. And also in the article, many times in the Kabbalas, for example, uh, it says uh, some congregations don't say this on Shabbos. Yes, yeah, yeah. So should I say that on Shabbos and Festival? I, uh, if you if you read the, the, the word, it's a beautiful, beautiful prayers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I, I personally say all of these things. Okay. okay. So okay. I mean, you, you ask if, if you read the, first of all, it's three, three lines on the front. <laughs> Not like, uh, I don't know. And, uh, End of the world. So some some things are not proper to say. So they, they say eh, everybody skips. So when it says we we don't say it on Shabbos and Yom Tov, so for sure you know you, you skip it. But otherwise, if some say, so uh, I mean uh, it's only a few lines and we do so. Okay. So basically, I'm not I'm not going to, to read it again. But uh, if you look at the cedar, so basically every time when you allow to answer Amen, so that's that's my personal like, hint. So you can uh, you can answer a man for different brachas. Okay, all the come pass. Uh, one second, one second between Eretz and the Earth. Last word of the section and Vayomer. And and he said uh, the first words of the final section of the Shema. Okay. So I mean, meaning after the first section of the Shema, and second, second, uh, second section of Shema, you can say yeah, uh, Amen. But that's uh, does it say Amen? No, no. Oh, I apologize. I have to take it back. So all of, all of these places, apologies. All of these places where where you say Amen, right? Where we said in Sidur that congregation says, should answer Amen, and plus and after the. The first blessing. So, so you, you say Shema Israel itself, the lunch myself. Then, if uh, you say first paragraph, so after this paragraph, I either, uh, it's either that does not say Amen, but you can answer Amen. And after the second paragraph, you also can uh, answer Amen. But after that, um, you don't answer Amen until the end. Uh, the Shema obligation. The the when when do you get the the mitzvah when you say Shema Israel or when you say Shema Israel in the first paragraph? No, Shema Israel uh, is in the uh, in first, um, no, no, what's that? Shema is all, all of the three paragraphs. No, no, I mean when you actually say Shema and close your eyes, I mean that part. I mean, I when do you get that? Uh, if, if, it's, if it's a mitzvah and uh, without uh, the rest of the three paragraphs? For example, the time for the gra is ending. It's nine twenty-eight. Gra ends at nine thirty. I only have. I, I don't have that much time. So, it do did I get the biblical mitzvah when I said the first paragraph, the first two? Because I know the third paragraph is basically uh, we'll say extra. It was added in. Uh, you're only the uh, because we have to have uh, what's it called? Uh, the leaving of Mitzrayim. That's the main point. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. If it's uh, well, what considered the mystery is uh, the Shema, I mean, uh, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I I would say all of the three paragraphs. Oh. I don't I don't think one paragraph is going to consider the mitzvah. Then then why do we say one paragraph? Uh, then why do we say one paragraph? Right. Uh, at at night, for example, at the oh because, because exactly so okay. That's because I know Rashi says in in, in no, 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 no. We, we say only one, one paragraph at night because you already said all of the three paragraphs twice a day. Mm -hmm. R Rashi says, for example, I, I know we maybe don't pass him like Rashi. I'm just giving you his reasoning. He mm -hmm. says that let's say someone didn't do Marev, right? He didn't say Shema then. He can okay. fulfill his obligation with just saying the one paragraph before he goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. so, uh, for, for which part of the Shema do you need Kavana or the Shema doesn't count? No, no, no. The, the, you see, the, the marriage itself, it's a, it's, a, it's a rabbinical obligation. So, I mean, if he said the Shacharis with all of the three pa paragraphs, so we can rely at least on Shacharis that, uh, no, Shacharis is a different day. No, no, Shacharis is the same day in, 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 uh, in the sense of the prayers, in some sense. 
So sometimes it's uh, we start from uh, from Marif, but in some sense it's uh, already said on that day. Mm -hmm. So before we, before he goes to bed. I mean, uh, any, anyway, he said that three paragraphs. Uh, but what what about the kavana? Like, let's say if you don't say the first, the very start, Smai Yisrael Hashem Alekeno. If you don't say that part with kavana, do you still get the mitzvah or no? I think so. Yes. Okay. Okay. I mean that that's of course uh, not the highest level, but after the fact, I think uh, we get in the mitzvah. So check time. Okay. So let's uh, try. Maybe we do one more. <clears throat> So, so we got uh, we got the point. Uh, every time it says in our seder amen, and plus uh, it says uh, between the first and second paragraph of Shema, so you can answer amen. Okay, continue number two. When one is between the section Ben Chaperakim in his prayer, for example, he has arrived uh, at any of the point uh, delineated above. As you said about, right? It is permitted to say amen to any blessing that he hears. Okay, exactly as we said. Okay. So let me just quickly say uh, uh, see appendix of Kitsar editorial glosses regarding the site of the main between Chabocher, Be'amo, Israel, Be'ahava. So, uh, and Shema. So actually, in, uh, uh, in our Sidurim, and uh, so it says that, uh, I think maybe Mishnah Brewer agree, if I remember correctly. So right, right before the Shema Israel, so it's like when, um, when this blessing is uh, finishes, so you can say Amen. And, and then, now sitting for, for sure it says Amen, you, you can answer, okay? So, and uh, if I remember uh, uh, like uh, correctly, the, the explanation was like, uh, in, in some sense, we, we just say, so that the, those are two blessings before the Shema. In, in the morning or evening, that, that doesn't matter. Those are two blessings before the Shema. So they say, so how can you now, so how can you now break between the blessings and the mitzvah? So in mitzvah to say Shema. So they, they say, it's like, uh, I remember correctly, but Mr. Bro explained that uh, it's like in like separate requirements. So after the fact, if you say Shema without any blessings, you fulfill the obligation. So it's proper to say with a blessing, but if you say without blessing, so after the fact, you fulfill the obligation. So in some sense, it's like separate uh, thing. So you can say Amen there. You can say Amen, and you can, uh, but uh, but in order not to say Amen, and you if you if you like. Uh, Pay close attention. So there is an opinion. I don't remember who said it, but uh, many poskim say it's not proper to say amen there. So what what people are doing? So in, in order not to say amen and not to be put in situation that you must say say amen. So they try to uh, to finish together with the chazan. So when you finish together with the chazan, so it's uh, it's not allowed for you to say amen because it's it's going to look like like you answer an amen to your own brach. Which is, uh, we, we don't do that. Shema okay. blessings, you're allowed to say the whole day? Say it again. Shema uh, blessings, no, 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 only uh, until the proper time. Until uh, until the, the latest Shema. Uh -huh. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe until the latest Shacharis. Uh -huh. Because as but, far as, uh, I, I, I'm not sure because... I'm not sure what Shulchan Aruch says, but as far as I remember, Rambam says you're allowed to say them the whole day. So, One second decline. Okay, sorry. All right. So, all right. So, continue. Let, let's try to finish up. Mm. When one is between the sections, Ben Chapir Akim, in his prayer, there is he has arrived at any uh, point uh, delineated above. He's uh, permitted to say amen to any blessing he gets. Okay, we said that. Oh, Hashem. And he's uh, certainly permitted to respond to Kaddish, uh, Kiddusha, I'm sorry, Kiddusha, Kaddish and Borku in this uh, section. Number eight. Mishnah writes that if one hears Kaddish, when he's between the section, he may respond with amen, Yehish may rabba. And, and the following amen. To um, 
да, да, да е миран бял мол. Окей. Окей, со, окей, со, со, со. Со, when, uh, meaning when, when he is in, uh, when he is in bit, 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 between the section and he hears Kaddish, so he can say a many Okay, so number eight. Okay, so number eight. And Borhu, of course. But, um, but he should not say Baruch Hu Baruch Shmoy. That's as we said before, it's like additional, it was not mentioned in the Gemara, so they say don't do it. Also, if he hears a congregation recite Kriya Shema, he may not recite the verse Shema Israel, uh, Hashem Alakeinu, Hashem Echad, uh, here or in Israel, Hashem Azalgad, Hashem is one. He may not. So that's very interesting. I mean, he can say, but this he cannot say, together with them. Rather, he should continue reciting the prayers that um, that uh, he has the same, but in a loud voice, right, the loud voice, in the middle of the congregation recite the Shema. That's what uh, the lead was telling us uh, like a few, few weeks ago, right? So that's from Shulchan So that it should not, it should appear that he's reading the Shema along with them. So basically you just hear the, the tune uh, with, uh, with which he's reciting, uh, that, that he's saying something, so, Nobody is going to suspect that he's not saying Shema. Okay, so that's Halacha. And uh, last commentary, and I guess we we'll stop here. To simply um, carry on this one prayer while the congregation inside the Shema would appear as one does not wish to be included in an acceptance of sovereignty of Hashem. As we said below, so they all of them saying Shema, and you're not saying Shema, that's, uh, that's a problem. That's very problematic. It's like uh, everybody said, Hashem is a, is a king and you you in doubt as for Shalom. So okay, you, you can clo close your eyes. And as I said, uh, that's what my, my personal observation. So since many people they uh, do it very, very quietly, so you, you don't even have to like do all the melody. Because people will hear you that that you're some, saying something else and it could create even more issues. Okay, so we can finish here. Stop here. So any questions on any topics? This topic and other topics. Uh, uh, topic I one. Yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, so, I I wanted to know uh, about the minyan. Um, I had the answer before, but I I want to know more clearly about uh, the number ten. What happens if you have uh, uh, fifth? 15 people uh, it's it's counted at two minyanim or only one no 15 people it's it's, it's only one minyan so all, all the people in one room they they praying together it's one minyan it could be five five hundred people five thousand people so it's at uh, well, when we send 10 people 10 people is the minimum to be it's called minyan but it could be as many as you want there is no limit on the maximum number. Oh, so there is no no such thing as free minions, minionims. What, what what do you mean? Can you explain? Uh, it's only always. It's always uh, only one minion every time, every place. Only only one minion. So for I give you I give you an example in a in a case where where we were discussing before. So two people who want to say Kaddish, let's say if two people wants to be Hazanim Davin in front, because uh, this guy lost his mother, this guy lo lost his brother, let's say, right? So they can split and they go to different rooms. In the same way, it could be multiple rooms, upstairs, downstairs, some like a big synagogue. So one can go upstairs and they'll, they'll go downstairs and they can pray at the same time. Now in this case, it's going to be two million. Oh, when so they pray together, it's one minyan. Doesn't matter how many people. So, oh, right, got it. Uh, so, two minyanim would require two hasans. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So oh. it, it, it should be a leader. So they they in different rooms. They they don't see each other. They don't hear each other. Yeah, it should be some uh, the, the different leader for each minyan. Absolutely. Okay. 
so I, I want to ask, so I know, yes. for example, uh, let's say I make a bracha on a food. Uh, let's say, uh, if, if I say, uh, bless the Yushim for the pineapple, instead of saying bless the Yushim for the fruit, it counts or no? I think uh, after the fact, is that it does count, I think. So you, you make the, the, the new bracha. But on pineapple, you say uh, uh, fruit of the earth. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Pine well, pineapple and then banana. So all of this, uh, I'm, I, I don't want to say all, but, but at least these two, they, um, so palm tree is, is, is not considered a tree, even though it's palm and it's tree, it's not tree. Why? Because uh, the, the definition of the tree, that it survives the winter, and bears fruit from from the same uh, uh, from from the same branches, but palm it's always like it it grows from the middle all the time and it has new branches always new branches. Nothing is is growing on all the, on the last year branches. In a sense, so it's like uh, we compare the palm tree to uh, to what uh, what is it. Uh, to all, 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 all of these uh, other vegetables, uh, is to, to, to potatoes, let's say. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm Dominic Shwen Ezri, right? Instead of saying all the paragraphs, uh, for example, let's say we get to Maidan, I just say, you know, Buster uh, Yushim, you know, just I, I just say the very bottom, I just say the very end, I say Buster Yushim who grants wisdom, you know, so on and so forth, without saying the backbone. Does it count or no? I, I think in, in, some, in some instances, there is. Uh, when when you want to shorten your prayer for whatever reason, so you can say first first line and last line. Uh -huh. In some cases, there is a like like a person under the pressure this and that. So, so but and under normal no normal circumstances we don't do that basically. Understood. Understood. Okay. That's okay. That's another. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, about the lashonaha. In the past, uh, that occurred, that happened about the uh, staining on the walls. And today, it, does it happen still no. today? No, no, no. You see, uh, <clears throat> and I, I, it, it that does not happen, and I'm, I'm going to explain exactly why. Because in the olden days, so, so for, for example, he spoke Russian, he did whatever he did, right? And he did Tishuma, and now he has to bring offering to the temple. Right, so part of his uh, purification is offering to the temple, and he has to be sprinkled upon the from this uh, ashes of a red cow. So unfortunately, we, we don't have temple; we don't have uh, uh, ashes of the red cow. So there is no no uh, no way for us to purify him. So basically, we, we cannot uh, put a person in the situation when there, there is no like solution to his issue. Okay. Uh, so all other other things, whatever we do, you can always do the shua. You can always uh, be forgiven. But in this case, there is a technically there is no way for us to rectify the, the sin. And uh, I think to this, uh, I wanted to know if uh, we are allowed to or not allowed to speak uh, la sonara about the nations. So about the nation, they, they say that there is no uh, there is no prohibition to speak bad about uh, non-Jews on one hand, but our sages say don't do it because why you get used to it and you're going to start speaking about the Jews. So uh, it's not a good nature to speak uh, to speak about other people. And uh, as uh, as we were speaking with David early uh, late last night, so and he brought up a good very good point not to talk like uh, empty talks. Like what is, what is going to help you that, uh, I don't know, Chinese do it in China, what this uh, French do it in France, how, how is it going to help? How is it going to, going to bring you close to Hashem? You understand? It will not. Whatever you, you write about them, 100%, whatever you say, you write, but uh, it's not going to, 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 to help your connection with Hashem. So why would you waste your time and life? You understand? Uh -huh. Yes, uh, and, and specifically I was asking this because uh, Rav Revan uh, was um, uh, telling us 
in a lecture about uh, the causes of of, of cancer uh, due to immorality, and I uh, I tried to do some research and with. Uh, uh, one second, uh, he was uh, talking about what cancer. Yes, that the main three causes of cancer are located in the in the private areas of both female and. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah. I, I went to the databases and I researched that uh, uh, certain nations are, are more prone to this. And I wanted to pu pu publicize this, but I think maybe it's not, not appropriate to it's do not, it. It's not, um, I mean, if you, even if you publicize, how, how is it going to help you? How, how is it going to help the national reserve? Understand? Uh, so I mean, uh, it's not forbidden. But I would say it's not forbidden, but uh, it's it's better to pu publicize something that is going to to help the Jews, not uh, not uh, speaking about uh, like if if they if they if these non Jews find out that uh, there is a Jew speaks about them that they are so immoral and stuff like that. I mean, uh, besides the hatred, is not going to help. Yeah, understand? It's not going to bring any positive result. So we. We are positive result uh, oriented, right? Okay, okay, thank you. All right, that's it, David. You, you, you good? Okay, Baruch Hashem. So I wish you everybody good night. So tomorrow, Bizrat Hashem, we're doing 4 p.m. Yes, yes. Right. Good night, take care, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. אני מברך את הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי ארגון בעזרת השם, שהלכו בפעליון, שעלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה, הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא בלשונות ליבם, לטובה ולברכה, שבכל מה שיפנו, ישכילו ויצליחו, יזכו עוד לעשות כאלה וכאלה, הודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן. הוא היהודי הזה, הוא היה מיליונר, סגר את כל הביזנס, אמר אני משקיע פה בעולמה של תורה, בפלורידה. פלורידה, איפה זה פלורידה? אמריקה. כן, ליד. אנחנו שם עכשיו הולכים להקים קהילה ספרדית גדולה. קהילה ספרדית גדולה.